Gowan here with the Greenville Union School District with story time. And we're so glad that you are with us before you go to bed. So tonight's story is that girl on TV could be me. And this is, many of you know her. She's been coming to our schools uh, for story time. And that is Miss Leticia Ordaz, my sister from Sacramento, California. And it is, today is the first day of Women's History Month. So every single day during this month, I am going to read you a story about a fabulous, wonderful woman, a female, who is doing just really great things for schools and kids and our communities. So thank you so much for being here. You are going to love this story. Hola, comunidad de Greenfield. Soy Superintendente Gabán, aquí con ustedes del sitio escolar de Greenfield, leyendo historias. So, gracias por estar aquí conmigo. Esta noche voy a leer una historia de mi hermana que se llama Leticia Ordaz. Ella es una reportera en la ciudad de Sacramento, California, y ella también es una autora. So, ella escribió este libro porque ella quería ver más gente como ella, mexicano, latino, en la tele. ¿Y por qué no, verdad? So, ella es la autora de esta historia. So, gracias por estar aquí conmigo. Todo este mes de marzo vamos a leer historias de la mujer. So, gracias por estar aquí. Okay, here we go. That girl on TV could be me. By Leticia Ordaz, illustrated by Juan Calle. In a small town in California called Galt, a five-year-old Latina watched the news. Her mommy said, Leti, turn off the TV. It's dinner time. It... I was that girl, and I asked my mommy, why doesn't anyone on TV look like me? Mommy replied, don't worry, mija. One day after you go to college, you could be on the news too. She and Papi ensured me that to work hard to achieve my dreams, just like everyone else. I wanted to be on TV, but I was the only, I was a shy girl in class. When my sixth grade teacher, Miss, Mr. Henrik, called on me to read aloud, I was very nervous. I spoke so quietly that my classmates shouted, speak up, Leticia, we can't hear you. When I got home, I locked myself in my room and I practiced speaking in front of a mirror for two hours. You can do this, I thought. The next time the teacher calls on you, you read out loud and you be proud. That's called self-talk. Uh, a lot of us do that when we kind of want to encourage ourselves. I, I entered the golf pageant Señorita Independencia de Mexico to celebrate my Latina culture. I wasn't a good dancer and I didn't win the contest, but I did make a lot of friends and I got awarded Miss Photogenic and a college scholarship. After Lorena returned, uh, graduated from golf high school, she went to work. But I wanted to attend college to show my cousins and my little brother Javier another path. So I enrolled at Sacramento State, a beautiful campus full of trees. I entered studying theater, but switched to communications. Students ran their own newscasts on cable TV, so I wanted to learn and practice that as much as possible. We wrote and we um, did our reports, and I was the anchor. Veterans looked at, took me under their wings. Producer Steve Mellish advised me, don't ever tell someone you want to be an anchor. You must work for that title. News anchor Louise Hart mentored me. This is a tough business and the starting pay is peanuts. On your first job, you're going to have a one man band. Just you carrying your own camera and editing your own stories. But you can do it. Unafraid, I accompanied reporters to snowstorms. In a satellite truck, we dropped off photographer Rob Stewart to shoot a video. When we found him later, he was practically frozen. Photographers patiently helped me practice stand-ups and roadsides in rainstorms. Sometimes I needed 20 lakes to get it right. 20 takes, not lakes. 20 takes to get it right. I wanted to be a reporter and, and I mailed my video resumes to 200 TV stations all over the country. Before my college graduation, my boyfriend Enrique and I drove through a blizzard to be interviewed in Elko, Nevada. The news director, Jim Elliott, said, if you can carry a camera and a tripod, you're hired. The equipment weighed 65 pounds and I was only 95 pounds, but still I answered, yes, I can. I began my dream career making minimum wage at only $8 an hour. Just like my parents, I had to leave my hometown to achieve my dreams. 
Before Christmas, I became the first in my family to graduate from college. As I put on my cap and gown, tears of joy rolled down my parents' faces. They sacrificed so much to give us opportunity to do more with our lives. On New Year's Day, I left Elko. My parents drove me in a moving truck with my bed and belongings over the snowy Sierras. At the small TV station, I met the morning anchor, Ellen Chang. Congratulations, said Ellen as she handed me heavy equipment. Treat this camera with care. It's our only one and we have to share it. After a quick lesson, I went to cover a story and make my deadline. I covered cowboy poetry that day. Western Wranglers shared stories and songs before an, an admiring audience. My first stand up was blurry and a bust, but I told myself I will get this right. For more than a year, I wrote my own stories, shot video, prepared online interviews, did my own makeup, and edited my own reports. However, I was super homesick for California. My family, I missed them so much, and more than anything, I missed my mommy's flour tortillas. Just then, I got a call from Bakersfield, KGET News Director Jack Bow. He proposed, I can make you an offer plus a cameraman a cameraman to go with you on stories. This was my lucky day and I accepted. My first story was a live shot covering a bear in my apartment complex. I remember meteorologist Ron Mayetta's advice. He said, if you don't have a script, keep it short, simple and to the point and describe what you are seeing. Next, I worked at the Fox station in Fresno. Once I was wrapped up by a snake at the county fair, covering honeybees at an almond orchard, they bit me. My photographer and I were bitten by a scourge of mosquitoes. Ooh. After many years and long shifts of paying my dues, my dream finally came true. I became a reporter in my hometown of Sacramento station on channel three. I was so glad to be back in my hometown with my family and friends. My most memorable stories involved animals and helping people. At a dairy farm, Big Lucy the cow splashed me with poop. Oh no. Then at the surfing park, a giant wave wiped me out on live TV. Happily, I did finally marry Enrique. After my seven years in the broadcast business, Enrique and I started a family. But now I was gonna have a baby pregnant and so I was worried. Maybe some viewers won't want to see me on TV anymore. I was wrong. My newsroom boss, Lori Walden, surprised me by announcing you are going to be our new anchor. And if you don't know what an anchor is, an anchor is like the main reporter that sits and is always on TV and sits in the station. Now we have two little boys, Maxton and Bronx, and they see their mommy on the news and it melts my heart every time they say, mommy, we are proud of you for reading to the whole city. In 2018, my, for breaking news, I rushed to Butte County to cover the campfire. It was the most destructive fire in California's history. I hugged families who had lost their homes, but had not lost their hope. Through it all, I love talking about my job with students. Sometimes I have them practice speaking with a microphone. My biggest reward is helping the shy ones. I tell them dreams can come true no matter the color of your skin or where you come from. You will face hardships, but you have to believe in yourself. And that's the story. What a beautiful, it's a true story. So it's expository informational text all about the life of our beautiful sister, Leticia Orlaz. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a really restful night of sleep. And I'm Superintendent Galvan sending a great big bear hug from our family to yours.